Very much. Let's get some more on all of this. Republican Senator James Risch of Idaho is a member of the uh, Ethics, Foreign Relations and Intelligence Committees in the United States Senate. Senator, thanks very much for joining us. So very quickly on what we just heard from Sarah, uh, do you have any uh, recommendations how Donald Trump can avoid potential conflicts of interest? He's got an enormous business that he's got to separate from. Uh, well, the, uh, he's going to have an army of lawyers that uh, that are advising him on how to do this. It's going to be done, I'm sure, very carefully. And uh, you guys are going to be looking over your shoulder uh, every step of the way. So I'm sure they're going to be uh, very careful about how they do that. What about the Senate and, and, and the House of Representatives? You guys have oversight responsibilities as well. I assume you'll be looking as well. I, I think everybody's going to be watching. So I'm, I'm sure they're going to be uh, very careful on that. Uh, the law, uh, we have very clear laws in America about using your public office to make money. Uh, to benefit yourself, and uh, I'm, I would be shocked if the president-elect of the United States wasn't uh, uh, fully aware of uh, the consequences and has lawyers uh, breathing down his throat every uh, every day to uh, see that he he stays. Uh, this clear. is Donald Trump, you know. He doesn't necessarily always play by the normal <laughs> rules. Uh, you're <laughs> yeah. laughing. Uh, yeah. He does it his own way a lot. He of does. The time. Got him elected. That's right. <laughs> so okay. you're so you're saying uh, you're not worried. Well, you know, you got to take these things one step at a time. I, uh, you know, people are, are going out looking at a parade of horrors that could happen. Certainly things uh, could happen. But uh, uh, let's, uh, let's give him the opportunity to move forward and, uh, and, and watch how he does it. What would you do if there is some sort of perceived conflict that you see a conflict after January 20th, uh, a business deal, for example, all of a sudden getting done uh, in, in part, let's say, because he's president of the United States. Well, there's uh, obviously procedures in place for that uh, the, through the Department of Justice, and uh, uh, that's where that would have to be uh, handled, not through the legislative branch, but through the, uh, uh, through the Department of Justice, through the... Because uh, it is pretty extraordinary. I don't know any other president in our history who's had these kinds of enormous business deals and, you know, and, and a huge Trump organization, which he certainly has. Right, and, and you're right. On, on the magnitude, it is larger than it's been, but it's always been there. We're all human beings. Uh, oh, everybody you earned say a living procedures, before they became... There are proce what procedures are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about the criminal procedures uh, through the Department of Justice. They have uh, an FBI that can investigate any of these things. They can, using the subpoena system and the other uh, ways that they gather evidence, uh, uh, they can do that. They can follow the rabbit down the hole and uh, eventually put it in front of a judge. Yeah, he's got to be very precise when he has this no news conference. Assuming that. he does, supposedly it's going to be on January 11th. Uh, we'll all be anxious to hear what he and his lawyers have come up with. Uh, I suppose you were pretty shocked when you woke up this morning. You heard about the House ethics panel being gutted. <laughs> well, you know, not really. Uh, well, if I, we, we do it differently on the Senate side than the House uh, side does. Uh, they apparently have another step in there that we don't have of this of this other committee uh, on our it's side. Independent, there's three independent, independent panel, panel. They can go ahead and investigate. Uh, on our side, there's three Republicans and three Democrats, uh, all equal, who sit on our ethics committee. And in the years I've been on it, which has been all my time in the United States Senate, uh, it, it has worked very well. The most important things that come out of ethics investigations are when someone crosses the line for criminal behavior, and when that happens. Uh, we always refer it uh, to the Department of Justice uh, if necessary, although usually the Department of Justice uh, is there at least as quickly as we are or maybe even before we are. And so those are, the, it, it's, the, it, it's the crossing the line on, on criminal statutes that is really important. And we have a very clear way of handling it. It's been very successful. I, there, I, I, can, I obviously can't speak for anyone in a committee, but uh, I, I think that our committee is, uh, is very well. You give this. Donald Trump uh, credit for that tweet, uh, which propelled, I, I suspect, sure. at least contributed to the House Republican leadership, changing their mind, reversing course, and deciding, you know what, we're not going to gut that panel. Well, I think so. And I, I think that that actually shows sensitivity on his part. Uh, on the part of on Donald the part Trump. part of Donald Trump uh, to go there. Because I, I think being part of the internal workings on this, uh, a lot of this is, uh, is much more perception than it is anything else. Because like I said, you have the, uh, uh, the second branch of government, the judicial uh, system, the third branch of government involved when someone steps over the line on criminal things. But this was a, a, a demonstration of his power. He's not even president of the United States. right? He is the leader of the Republican Party right now. Well, he certainly is uh, the leader of uh, America right now. Uh, the states of America elected him to be uh, their president. And uh, and that's uh, that's important, and people are going to listen to him. Uh, and and I'm I'm sure that as he goes day by days, 
he realizes how closely people are listening to him and the power that he does have, be it with a tweet or, or elsewhere. You could do it through a tweet or a, a, a statement he, he makes, or we'll see what he does at that news conference, his, if in fact that news conference takes place. His tweets are, are more closely followed than any tweeter before him. Well, there are some movie stars that have more <laughs> followers than he does. <laughs> but probably not as much influence. <laughs> That's, that is correct. That is correct. All right, stand by. Uh, sure. There's new developments happening on the Russian hacking, right. new information we're getting about statements that are about to be made by the Director of National Intelligence, the CIA Director. We'll take a quick break. Much more with Senator Risch right after this. We're back with Republican Senator James Risch, uh, and we want to talk to him about the classified report on cyber attacks linked to the U.S. election, which U.S. intelligence blames on Russia. Sources tell CNN it's expected to be ready as early as this week and that the president-elect Donald Trump will get a personal high-level briefing. Our justice correspondent Evan Perez is joining us now with more. Evan, Trump continues to cast doubt on Russia's role in the hackings, and the WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange denies Russia was the source of stolen emails leaked by his organization. What's the latest information you're getting? Well, Wolf, we know that the intelligence community is certain about its assessment that Russia was behind the election hacks. They don't so much care about what Julian Assange has to say, but they li later this week, the top leaders of the intelligence community hope to make the case personally to the president-elect Donald Trump. And that could come on Friday when Trump finally meets with the director of national intelligence, James Clapper, and the CIA director, John Brennan, along with other top national security officials. The uh, intelligence community is completing a report in the next couple of days on cyber intrusions on the U.S. elections, going all the way back to 2008. Uh, we expect that the public version of the report will include newly declassified information on the evidence that supports the intelligence community's assessment that Russia was indeed behind the hack of the Depart Democratic Party organizations. Now, U.S. officials tell CNN that companies across the country have detected IP addresses and malware that could be connected to the Russian hackers, though it's unclear if they penetrated the networks. Now, the discovery comes after the FBI and DHS put out this report uh, last week, naming the Russian Just hacking operation Grizzly Step and warning companies uh, on what to be on the lookout for. And we should add that the Russian government today again said that it had nothing to do with these hacks. And meanwhile, Wolf on Capitol Hill, uh, a bipartisan group of lawmakers says that it's planning a leg legislation that would expand on these sanctions on Russia for these cyber activities. Wolf? Evan Perez, our justice correspondent, thanks very much. We're back with Senator Risch. Uh, you have any doubt that Russia was responsible for these cyber attacks? Well, I wouldn't uh, put it in terms of having any doubt. Uh, the, the, people keep saying, oh, they're certain 100%. That never happens in the intelligence community, particularly on hacking. It is with a high degree of probability that uh, that's where it came from. But uh, with the kinds of spoofing that's done on the Internet and what have you, you're never 100%. However... Uh, certainly, the uh, intelligence community has concluded with a high degree of reliability that, in fact, the Russians were involved. Uh, you have to set aside what the Russians say. You have to set aside what Assange says. They, they both are, are people uh, in entities you without You clearly don't believe the Russian statements, and you don't believe Julian Assange. Set them aside. You, you want to look when at the When you say set them aside, what does that mean? That means look at all the other evidence. For, whether, what, what they say bears no, bears nothing. Uh, as far as evidence is concerned, because it's not believable. Because the evidence that you've seen, and you're privy, you're a member of the Intelligence Committee, the evidence that you've seen, and you don't want to release classified information sources and methods, as they say, but the evidence that you've seen is, is convincing enough for you to conclude that the Russians did it. Let me put it in these terms. I have reviewed the uh, uh, much if not most of the material that the intelligence community has reviewed, and it's been a lot of material. Uh, my assessment is no different than the intelligence community, and that is that it is with a high degree of probability that the Russians were responsible for the hacking that's involved. Having said that, you know, I, I, I keep trying to put, a, uh, put this in perspective. This shouldn't surprise anyone. Ha this hacking that goes on goes on all day, every but, but, day. It's but ubiquitous. Donald Trump repeatedly rejects it. He says it could be Russia, yeah. it could be China, it could be some guy on, on a bed weighing 400 pounds. He, those are his words. Right. He, he makes it sound like it's ridiculous to conclude that Russia was responsible, and then he doubles down and praises Putin. Yeah. Well, I can't, I, I certainly don't want to speak uh, for the president-elect. Uh, he'll have to sp speak for himself in that regard. He's going to get this uh, high-level briefing. I suspect part of this is colored by the fact that uh, every time this is reported in the media or what have you, there's this tinge of, well, that makes his, his election in question or, or it, it, uh, it raises questions about uh, his legitimacy as president. And I think 
that's probably a... a but uh, Senator McCain, your different. colleague, he says this was an act of war by the Russians. And, and forget about whether or not it had an impact on the elections. This, you believe, McCain believes, when, when Donald Trump gets this briefing from Clapper and Brennan, maybe as early as Friday, do you think he will emerge from that briefing convinced as you are? I, I can't answer that question. Uh, regarding an act of war... I think that we have long concluded that uh, these kinds of things uh, are an act of war, certainly not a bloody, hostile, physical attack, uh, but any time that uh, a country tries to disrupt another country in some way, uh, shape, or form, and I can say, I think, uh, without uh, uh, going overboard here, that uh, uh, what, what, what you've seen now in this election process is just a small part of what actually is going on out there as far as hacking is concerned. And it isn't just the, the Russians. And it isn't just in our election process. This, this, as we're sitting here, there have been many, many attacks on the Department of Defense and, and all other agencies of the United States government. There are over 200 countries in the world, and uh, the number that are involved in, these, in this sort of thing far exceeds the number that Pre President Obama says in 2015, the Chinese hacked the Office of Personnel Management and millions of Americans who work in the government, some of the most sensitive information that they had to supply the U.S. government to get security clearances was compromised. That's true. And as I said, the number of countries involved in this far exceed the number that are not. But the Russia, China... North Korea, the, the Sony operation, yeah. they were responsible for that. The U.S. has pretty good intelligence when it comes to hacking cyber attacks because they can figure out uh, in, in a physical way how they did it. Sometimes. Uh, the, these things are, uh, we are, we are where, on, on cyber security matters, we are where Henry Ford was when he made the Model T. We got a long, long, long ways to go. Uh, before we can say with certainty what's happening in these matters and, for that matter, how they're done and, uh, and that type of thing. You think the uh, president, uh, President Obama, did the right thing by expelling those Russian diplomats, by shutting down some of their facilities here in the United States? Well, I think that uh, it was a normal uh, response to it. When I heard that uh, he was going to give a response, I knew exactly, uh, or I thought I knew exactly what he was going to do, and I was right, that, uh, that, there, were, that there were going to be these expulsions. This isn't new. This, is, this happens all the time. Uh, from a uh, diplomatic standpoint, uh, is almost, not quite, but almost a non-event as far as expelling. Uh, Normally the other country, them. this particular case, Russia, they reciprocate, they do the same thing to American Ordinarily. diplomats. Ordinarily. Normally, but, but uh, Putin decided not to do it for which Trump praised him. Are you okay I, with that? I, I was a little surprised that the, that the Russians did not uh, do that. But look, Putin's moved beyond Obama. He's, he's uh, when he sent out his Christmas greetings, he sent Christmas greetings to, uh, uh, to uh, President-elect Trump. He did not uh, send the same thing to him. He's moved on. And so uh, I don't, I, I think that uh, things are going to change, and I think we all need to just sit tight for a little bit and see how this relationship is going to play out. It, you remember Obama announced a reset there's been no such announcement from the Trump administration. I think you're going to see a bit of a reset in one way or another. We'll see what happens. It's going to be it happening will. very, be very soon. Senator Rich, thanks so much for Thank coming in. Just, just ahead of